Hey guys, what's up? It's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history inside of your aquarium. Now we're going to have to be extra secret here uh, if we can hope to get a shot of this pregnant female gold line shrimp. She is a beauty. I got her from Lucas Bretz and she happens to be pregnant. We can get the shot. You can kind of see her belly there, but hopefully she'll turn around and we'll see her eggs in a minute here. Now, Neocaridina breed pretty frequently, so there's nothing that extra special about a Neocaridina that's pregnant being shown on film. However, this has been an experiment in this tank uh, to see if it's planted enough, if the stress is low enough, so forth, so on and so forth. Uh, for these shrimp and there are only 12 shrimp in here currently uh, as of when I put them in which was maybe two months ago so I wouldn't have expected them to start breeding until very recently uh, regardless but it turns out that they're comfortable enough to breed which is good but the interesting part is when you look at this tank from another perspective and the lights off just to not scare the shrimp we've got three kinds of danios we've got garamis full-grown lemon tetras which can be a bit nippy we've got tiger teddy live bears uh, guppies we've got I mean there's just a whole bunch of fish and Basically, this shrimp is just hanging out wide in the open, whereas I've seen shrimp hide from even guppies. So, how is this going on? Why is this happening? Uh, is it an accident? So on and so forth? Well, no, it's not an accident. I have specifically made sure to plant loads of grass and low-lying plants at the very bottom of the tank, Crips, grass, and uh, rotala, things like that, that are stem plants, but if so, I cut them very short. And then in between that, we have plants that grow higher. Well, in the process of that, you're making little cubbies. Not only did I do that, um, we'll see, can you see her eggs yet? I just wanted to show you guys, she's got a bunch of eggs. There they are, you can see that she is kind of expanding and contracting her abdomen which is and using one of her back legs or swimmerettes to uh, twitch and fan at her eggs, uh, which keeps fungus from growing and keeps them safe. But you can see the size of the fish that are all around her. I mean, we've got even bigger garamis, we've got plecos, we've got corridora, uh, and loaches in here, things that will hang out on the bottom and typically harass shrimp. So, the other thing that I made sure I did was I put in stone as substrate. So, I placed the stone big pieces and then little ones around them, and that allows nooks and crannies between the stone. doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what I'm saying, even without seeing um, me do it step by step or whatnot. But, yeah, you just leave space for the stones, and baby shrimp basically need a couple things. They need biofilm, clean water, oxygen, and not getting eaten. Well, the biofilm and the, the clean water is getting taken care of by the filter. And then but all over the tank, we've got these little stagnant pockets in between rocks and things like that. And they're, they're microclimates. And you can see that they're growing things like algae. Well, this is highly, highly uh, saturated in aufux, or uh, that basically just means a biofilm of nutrients, uh, of bacteria, fungus, and plankton in uh, working together in a big uh, exchange of nutrients in a, like, mat on a surface. It looks like slime, like a clear slime or a green slime oftentimes. Usually that green slime is a good sign that then you got algae or some sort of other uh, substance in there that d performs uh, 
that uses uh, chlorophyll and uh, can do photosynthesis. And usually it exchanges that... Um, it exchanges the energy that it gets from the photosynthetic pro process with, uh, you know, other zooplankton or s little mini sea anemone looking zooplankton and things like that that basically uh, eat really tiny microbes or, uh, you know, full uh, f um, fungi or mold that uh, uses a surface and breaks it down, eats the surface itself. All of that stuff uh, it goes on in an Aufuchs environment, and I encourage that. And you can encourage that by leaving textured sources around, shaded sources, sources with high flow, low flow. Basically, you just want some diversity. And in the case of shrimp and fish, it's not always a bad thing, especially when you have a, a, a tank planted this densely. It's not a bad thing to overfeed by just a little bit uh, your fish. So they actually get excess food. And then I rarely, but every few days, maybe every three or four days, I'll throw in actual shrimp food. So we shall see how the babies do. But there is lots of cover, and they're instinctively very good at hiding. Uh, the, even the pregnant mothers generally don't come out, and that was another reason I got the camera out. Just to point out that she is hanging out in broad as daylight water uh, on a stick in the main thoroughfare of the tank. And there are other shrimp uh, that I saw earlier too that were, you know, sitting up here or whatnot. And they're not afraid. They're not getting harassed. Whereas in other tanks, I've seen them like picked on and uh, nipped at and things like that. Even eggs uh, stolen from them. So, I just thought I'd share that with you guys, and uh, just tell you guys it's totally possible to even keep more aggressive species in a tank. Now, if we had anything bigger than, say, gouramis, the gourami could easily eat that neocaridina, to be honest. And uh, the Siamese algae eater could, uh, probably the pandagars as they get older can, some of the leopard danios and things like that, they can. My cribs definitely can. Uh, so it's a numbers game, and you want to make sure that you've got a decent number of shrimp. And, uh, you know, that's why they have somewhere between 20 and 40 babies each time. Uh, they hope that, you know, a handful of those, 10% or whatever it may be, end up making it to reproducing themselves uh, as they are in their old age themselves, they're young, and there's grandparent shrimp in the same tank. So that is just kind of how nature works, and you can aid it along by also keeping your fish distracted. This is the last little tip for you. Keep your fish distracted with fry and other things going on. So yeah, they could eat the shellfish, which is really appealing to a lot of fish, However, like my cribs, for instance, they're more interested in chasing fry from the guppies or uh, snails that are doing things like floating around or um, intimidating other fish around their size. So sometimes you can get predators that are so big, uh, so if you were going to go into like larger cichlids and things, that they wouldn't care at all about the shrimp because they're simply just not an effective use of time to harass baby shrimp. So, um, yeah, that's the basic rundown of what's going on in this little tank and uh, why the shrimp is sitting out in the open as a pregnant female alone uh, in a tank full of lemon tetras all around her and gouramis and danios and who knows what. Well, I do. <laughs> I know what. But that's that, and I will talk to you guys later. I hope it encourages you guys to give it a shot. Don't put anything that you're not willing to lose into a tank like this. And uh, let me know what you think of it. Uh, what What's the most extreme combination maybe you guys have kept uh, successfully with shrimp and fish together? Uh, I'd like to know that. Pea puffers, for instance, I held them for a little while, but eventually the pea puffers won, so <laughs> that's not working. But 
beyond all of this, have a great night. Have a great morning. Have a great day. Whatever it is for you. If you made it this far, let's get a like, pretty please. And uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more content. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.